Um, so continuous integration and virtual machines and all of the rest of it um, sounds uh, lovely. And you can see why it might be attractive to someone who needs to, you know, take an entire server room and roll it up into a machine and toss it out the window. And that is certainly a technological feat that I'm a big fan of. Um, but you might be a little surprised to hear about it here, uh, where it sounds a little cloudy. And especially if you were here last year uh, in the fall for any of the Snowden in the Future talks, you may be very surprised to see people from SFLC talking about things that sound cloudy when we've been pretty clear that we think the public cloud is unsafe at any speed. Um, and the, uh, the real question, I think, is what about the users? Um, the public cloud may be something that you like or you dislike, uh, but from a user perspective, no one will sell us the cloud. The name is very apt. It's somewhere out there. It's kind of amorphous. You can't get your hands around it. What they sell you increasingly are accessories to the cloud, things that we used to call computers. Uh, and the smaller and cheaper all of our computers get, the more they are sold as mere accessories. Uh, and the more all of us are supposed to transition from being computer owners to renters of activity in somebody else's data center. Um, a prime example is this lovely little Chromebook, which is a highly functional $200 laptop uh, that is sold with just the Chrome web browser as an operating system, because who would need more from a computer than some websites? Um, there's no reason that we should treat these devices as accessories, uh, and plenty of reasons that we would not want to be uh, renters of activity in somebody else's data center. Uh, so I'm going to try and cover what some of those reasons are um, and how free software gives us the ability to take back some of that control. Um, and, you know, break yourself a piece of that cloud and actually wrap your hands around it and make it your own. Um, can I get a show of hands of who might be interested in having their own actual piece of cloud? Anybody? It's a good show of hands. Um, I think I saw yours in the suspender first. Uh, can I ask your name? Yuri. Yuri? Okay. Congratulations. You own this now. <laughs> uh, meet me after class and we'll discuss how it works. <laughs> um, well, the, I think you may find that this is a shockingly capable <laughs> piece of hardware. Uh, especially once you turn it back into a computer, um, which we have done for you. <laughs> so, as I mentioned earlier, I've worked with SVLC for uh, almost 10 years now. And when I started, uh, this is not what laptops looked like. Uh, my laptop at the time was an old ThinkPad T40 that weighed three times as much as this, got a third the battery life, and cost about $1,500 to $2,000, you know, if you were buying it new. Um, we used those laptops because they ran free software, which 10 years ago was difficult. Uh, the software was there, but generally speaking, the drivers were not, the little bits of uh, software that allow your operating system to actually talk to the various elements of your hardware. So it was very common to try and install a free software operating system on a laptop and end up without graphics, or with something that could not sleep, or with something that was a thousand degrees hot or had no wireless. Um, thankfully, that is 
no longer the case. Uh, manufacturers no longer build drivers just for Windows. Often they still build them in secret where you can't actually see the code that makes them run. Uh, but you can pretty much assume today that any commercial laptop that you buy, you would be able to run free software on. And that's important, but this is actually kind of special. Uh, the Chromebook, this one in particular, uh, which is an Acer C720, um, and in various arrangements, uh, most of the other ones that are currently available, is a free software first laptop. Under the hood, Chrome is actually Linux, and so all of the drivers are chosen specifically to work with that. Uh, this one has everything on it, right down to the microphone and the webcam, uh, running with completely free drivers that you can audit uh, and review, uh, except for the Bluetooth, but I'm not even sure that why they put those on laptops. Um, and to have these sorts of machines, which are completely capable free software laptops, this one is as powerful as the laptop that I started using. This is in the T42 range. Uh, but it runs for, you know, nine hours instead of three. Uh, and these are now so cheap that Google advertises them by showing people throwing them out of windows. They don't advertise that you can replace the Chrome operating system and turn them into uh, lovely little free software laptops. Um, we put Debian on this one. Uh, we call the whole process of taking the Chrome off of this and putting Debian on it, dechroming, because Debian starts with DE, and that's how uh, words are made. Um, and it's, it's really thanks to not just 10 years of free software driver developers um, and increasing participation from major manufacturers who are bringing the free software community in their uh, shops in order to build free drivers. Um, also the core boot developers and a whole community of core boot on Chromebook uh, developers who make all of this process both possible and easy. Um, it took about five minutes to replace the BIOS, uh, which is Chromebook, which is uh, core boot to start on these boxes um, with a community built uh, version of that. And the BIOS is the low layer right below the drivers, the lowest one that actually runs on the motherboard of the device. Um, all of this is a really great accomplishment. And we're actually very grateful to uh, Intel and Google and all of the developers who have made that possible because this is the solution to all of the historical problems that we have had with laptop hardware. Which is not to say there are no more problems. But all of the ones that we had, this answers. And that's quite an accomplishment. And to have that in technology that is so cheap and so widely available that school districts literally give it away to children around the country uh, is quite a step forward. Um, ten years ago, that kind of idea was something that OLPC was just introducing to the world. Uh, and now it has more or less materialized. I think it's a bar of ivory soap. It's 99.44% pure. There are two blobs left. They're in the CPU, they're Intel blobs. Uh, one of them initializes memory. We've already got free software teams working on the replacement of that memory initialization blob. And, and one is a, a, a really special blob. It's part of the anti-theft system. It's a little piece of binary stuff we can't quite figure out with an Intel signature on it. And if you take it away, the computer stops working after 30 minutes every single time. Uh, I, I think what we would really like is for Intel just to sign a no-op there rather than this, and, and then it won't be 99.44 percent pure, it will be 100 percent pure, and we'll be done. That's checkmate. That's free 
software on hardware we can trust. Uh, Ian didn't say that the operating system of this laptop that Ulrich Hockland just won is here. It's here. You see, it's here. It's in a USB key and a USB 3 port, and there are no bits in the box. Lost, stolen, searched, seized, nothing there. Uh, that's going to be the secure workstation of choice everywhere, dangerous around the world for everybody doing something uh, that somebody might kill them for because lost, stolen, seized, searched, there are no bits in the box. Never. There's nothing there. It's an empty box. You can also boot Tails from it and have a $200 piece of free software uh, laptop computer that will give you access to the highest quality and most polished uh, anonymity and privacy preservation software that we have to offer. It would be uh, really, really hard for national means of intelligence uh, to find anything there. You take a business trip to some country where you don't just throw it in the trash on the way out. It's gone. Uh, this, this is not just cheap not just fast, not just clean and sexy and neat and small. This is free. This is what freedom looks like. Uh, and it's true that without Google, without Intel, uh, it wouldn't be possible. Also without Ian uh, and the summer intern who helped us do it and all those developers who made it possible. Uh, it's true, uh, folks built this. I didn't want to embarrass uh, uh, B. Dale and Martin by using an HP one. Yeah, and, and, and besides, Ian bricked it with carelessness. But the... Uh, uh, but, but, it's coming back. Don't worry. But, 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 the, but, but the instructional video that shows you how to do this using exactly one screwdriver in exactly five minutes is up on our site today. All right, it will be up over the weekend. Oh, okay. You also need a wireless network in addition to a screwdriver. Uh, and... Uh, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, we've been trying to do this for the longest time. Ian's right, and this is, this is a heavy, heavy piece of work. And without the pressure of the Free Software Foundation and without all of the complaining and the moaning and all of that, um, I don't think it would even have happened among the people who did it. But we have been waiting for the longest time to say we have hardware.